Is our investment culture really growing? I happened to read the SEBI report on what is going on in FNO with individuals. And the thought that came to me is this. Are we really growing our investment culture? If you look at 2020 and 2024 as two milestones, one thing is certain. The number of market participants has exploded. We have more market participants in India now than ever before. And the rate of growth over these four years has never been seen ever before. So in terms of market participants, we have the numbers. But culture is never a numbers game because you can have huge numbers of people doing everything they should not do. Numbers can also make people do all the wrong things in the market. I'll give you just two numbers which will tell you what I'm trying to convey. In FI 23-24, the total losses made by individual investors in FNO is 1.8 lakh crore. During the same year, the inflows into equity mutual funds was 1.84 lakh crore. So for every rupee that the Indian mutual fund industry brought into the equity market, one rupee was lost in FNO by individual investors. This means that individuals probably lost more money in FNO than they actually invested in Indian equities through mutual funds because this 1.84 lakh crore includes corporate monies also and organizational wealth. It's not just individual money. So when you look at these two numbers, it's natural that I raise the question whether we are growing investment culture right or are we getting our investment culture right? It's time to question that because 1.13 crore people traded in FNO during that year and 1.05 of them made losses. Flip it and ask a question. How many people in FNO made more than just one lakh of profit during that year and you have a number which surprises. Barely one lakh people made a profit of more than one lakh in FNO during that year. Ask another question. How many people did only options trading amongst the individuals who participated in FNO and you get a staggering 94%. 94% of retail investors in FNO do only options. And how many people do only futures and you get a paltry 0.7% and the rest do both. Now, what really happened to these guys? Almost a crore of people who are doing only options. Did they make money? Sadly, options net-net made a loss of 55,000 crores. And futures made a profit of 13,000 crores. So, barely 1% of investors who participate in FNO make a profit. Most of them make losses. And who gains? Another important point I want to draw to your attention is the correlation between transaction cost and the loss. Because Culturally, you have every journalist, every influencer, every newspaper, every magazine, every market participant 
taking the moral high ground on transaction costs when it comes to mutual fund investing, when it comes to ETF investing, when it comes to stock broking for delivery. Now you say that, oh, there are no delivery charges in the zero brokerage. You say that broking is free, but only some other charges are there. So, zero brokerage actually give you the cheapest option to invest and you make a moral issue out of it. All these people have done this without any exceptions. But when it comes to pointing out that 50,000 crores was spent by 1.13 crore people, all individuals to make a total loss of 1.8 crores and half of these 50,000 crores went as brokerage in f and what we get is radio silence. Nobody amplifies this enough to make those investors aware that the place they are going is a casino and they are going to go back without their money. Instead, these people are telling you that food inside this casino is on the house and they are playing up all the side issues to bait you. Because another interesting statistic which I hope SEBI releases is that how many of these 1.13 crore people were on the zero brokerage platforms? That data point will tell you everything. But there are other pointers which you can make out from the annual report of the NSE and the BSC as to how much commissions were paid for volume incentives in f and I will keep that for another video, but that is a data point you can search and probably even mention it in the comment section for the benefit of other viewers. So, how much did the government make in all this? Government made STT of 13,800 crores. Between them, the two stock exchanges, BSC and NSC made 10,200 crores and the brokerages made 25,000 crores. So, look at the correlation between 50,000 crore of transaction cost and 1.8 lakh crore of losses. Almost 2.3 lakh crores is the total outflow from the pockets of individuals and the loss is 1.8 lakh crore. It is a staggering sum. And let us talk about those who lost big money. 127 individuals lost more than 10 crores in that financial year 23-24. 10,800 individuals lost more than 1 crore and a stunning 3.9 lakh individuals lost between 10 lakh and 1 crore. Totally, these 4 lakh individuals lost 1.1 lakh crore. That is nearly 55 percent of the total loss. And the balance 70,000 crores was lost by micro investors, tiny investors, small investors and retail investors. Just imagine what would have been the outcome if we had a better investment culture. We could have saved those other investors which is roughly 109 lakh crore people from the FNO and saved for these 109 lakh crore people nearly 70,000 crores. It is not a small sum, it is a staggering sum. The good thing is that SEBI has been transparent with this data. They have put it in the public domain. They have left it to people like us to discuss it, debate it and democratize data. By democratizing this data, the debate is now right in the thick of the public domain as to who is working for greater common good. Is it the zero brokerages? Are the influencers actually working for common good? What is the role of those who do subscriptions and sell them? What is the contribution of those who run coaching classes? Do these actually translate into anything good for people? To know that let us look at the big winners because taking a negative bent is not the only way to analyze 
a situation. Let's look at the positive side of it. Only 101 individuals made more than 10 crore profit in FY23-24. And the total profit made by these 101 people is a paltry 2,400 crores. It's paltry in comparison to the loss made by the entire 113 lakh people. 1 lakh 80,000 crore is that number. Contrast this with what the really successful guys earned. It's, it's relatively barely over a percent. Just a little over. Now, how many people made more than 1 crore profit? 2,400 people made more than 1 crore profit. And they have made a total profit of 5,600 crore. So, 2,501 individuals made a profit above 1 crore. And the total profit adds up to 8,000 crores. Contrast this 8,000 with 1,80,000 loss. Okay, let's look at how many people made between 10 lakh and 1 crore. Those who made more than 10 lakh and less than 1 crore, which is the mass segment, barely 26,500 people made this profit and it adds up, the collective profit of all these 26,500 adds up to just 7,200 crores. So the total profit of all these winners who made more than 10 lakhs profit is just about 15,200 crores. It's not a big sum. Contrast this with the total loss made by all the individual investors of 1.8 lakh crore. And the biggest losers are option traders. And the more volume they do, the more they lose. The total loss in option trading is 1,41,641 crores. And we keep congratulating ourselves on SIP book growing. I suspect the net SIP book, if you take it as a data point, will be far lower than the losses made in options even now. So, more people are losing more money in options than the amount that we are collectively investing in the SIP. So, let us not get into this massive hype that, oh, SIP has gone places, so everything is all right. Because if these people are not trading, which is roughly 109 lakh people are not trading, their money should be adding to this SIB book and I suspect that most of these 1,41,000 crore option losses are from their pocket. So who is really winning? Probably the people winning are certainly not individuals, they are entities. So it is a David versus Goliath fight, an unequal battle in which people with less preparation or with the wrong kind of expectations and capacity are fighting with extremely skilled people on the other side. It's nice to think of a David versus Goliath battle in an idealistic bent, but in reality, Davids get slaughtered by Goliaths. And that's essentially what's happening in our market. If we had the right investment culture, all these guys would have been investors. They need not have become speculators. The purpose of their becoming speculators is only to lose money. And all of us are guilty of failing to convince these people to take the right path. Most of them are coming to the FNO space only to lose money. And SEBI has clearly shown us the path to the right investment culture and lit up the stadium with such strong lights to make us realize that we are in the wrong place. f and is not for retail investors. And if we are going to be here, we are not going to be heading towards a better place from here. And it's very important for us to get out of here and get into a better place so that we stop losing money, we start growing money. More importantly, we start imbibing and growing the right 
investment culture thank you for watching this video